I'm Betty Lewis, nay Betty Wilson, and I studied French and German. I went to um, Cardiff University in 1943, and I graduated in 1946. It was all in Welsh, I didn't understand a word of it. I think it was a city hall. I mean, they didn't have official photographers there, and not many people had any decent cameras. So we used to all go to this um, Jerome, as it was called, in Cardiff, which was a studio. There was no getting together after. There was no social. You didn't have any tab naps, as my mother used to call them. John used to call them tab naps. Um, tea or cakes or anything afterwards. You didn't have a get together. You just went your separate ways. I was the only one doing German in my year. There was a girl above me, we used to have some lessons together. We were the only two in the sixth form who did German. But then our sixth form was only about 12 strong, I think. The only way I could, my mother and father could afford to send me to university was if you agreed to sign on to do your teacher training and they paid your fees. So that's how most of us went. Where did we go when we went out? The car dome where we used to go for coffee if we didn't go across to the Union. The Union was in Park Place, just one building. And um, it had a top lounge where you could play table tennis, set a table tennis table, just one. A middle lounge where everybody went to snog. <laughs> and the lounge down below where we did dance and there was a grand piano. You, if you wanted to have a drink, you had to go to the pubs first. Yes, no drinking allowed in the Union. We go to union dances, we go to um, city hall dances as well. And the Cardoma was another place we used to hang out. They used to throw us out in the end because we hadn't spent enough money. <laughs> and sport, I, yes, a sport. I used to play in the hockey team. We went up to Bangor. I remember going to Bangor one year. And the, the men's rugby team went up as well. And the trains were absolutely crowded. And coming back, there was no room anywhere. So the whole lot of us slept in the guard van, the rugby team and the hockey team. Well, literature, history. We had to read a lot of German, which is why even now I can probably read more German than I can speak. And, and how are your language skills now? How atrocious! <laughs> I still, I still read. I still get a German poetry book out occasionally and read it because I did like German poetry better than French poetry. But then you see, of course, I had no chance to practice it anyhow because I went straight from university to sanatorium. So it's it's university. It's teacher training, sanatorium. sanatorium. <laughs> this is not a conventional route, is it? Not, it's not, is it? 30 months over there. It was like a finishing school. Man, I quite enjoyed it once you got used to it. Well, I did speak some German in, in, um, in the sanatorium. One of the lovely old doctors there was an Austrian who'd escaped from Europe before the war. And she gave me German books and used to speak to me. The only way you could get to do any German was to go as an au pair. And who would want an au pair who'd just come out of a sanatorium for their children? They were desperate for teachers, primary teachers, at this stage. And the, you know, the, there were appeals for people to go back to teaching. I was officially teaching English to immigrants, mainly Bangladeshis, West Indians and um, Pakistanis. But it was, oh, it was great fun. In fact, it was such great fun that the staff in that school, well, I'm seeing them in a couple of weeks' time, we've all kept together and we've all gone to different schools. But it was, it was I felt, a really worthwhile job and I enjoyed it. We've all got the tassel on the wrong side. <laughs> Can you see? Oh, yes. It is, isn't it? I didn't yes. We didn't realise it at the time. <laughs>